So I personally use this notebook to create more as a PhD student and also to become more aware of my consumption. So if you've clicked on this video, you might also want to go from this consuming mindset to a creation mindset where you really start creating more projects and also to actually show some of the work that you've created. So whether it's writing a new paper or creating a blog post or maybe working on a creative film project, all of this requires us to kind of go from this consumption mindset to a more of a creation mindset. However, it seems in the current day and age or in the information age, it's so much easier to just keep on consuming without ever producing anything. It is easy to fall into this trap of productive procrastination where we read, for example, 100 pages, watch 10 lectures and still feel we haven't learned anything really. So I think it's hard to carve out moments during the day to really focus on creation. But I think this notebook for me has really helped me. So I use always a simple bullet journal as I will show you today. So I want to go over this simple method that I've kind of used and developed during my PhD using this one notebook where I track my time, take care of what I consume and also ensure that the information that I consume is relevant for my PhD project and not just information that I like consuming. So in general, the first step for me is the core practice and that for me is timestamp journaling. I also learned later or actually just a month ago that it, this is sometimes called interstitial journaling, which I got from Nest Labs, but I've actually been using this journaling technique for a while now. And it is just a simple method to track your time and thoughts. So it's about writing these short timestamp notes as you work, which helps you in general to stay focused and also mindful of your actions. And I do not always timestamp them. Sometimes I just take little notes here and there, but oftentimes I do timestamp and that kind of allows me to see in a glance how my working day in general is going. So what I do at the beginning of each working session where I want to spend some true time focusing is I will have some clear goals or clear outcome goals, what I want to have done or what I want to be working on that week. So usually I do have about three goals for each week that I want to be working on. So for example, for this week, it was writing a paper, grant applications and a PhD presentation that I have to be working on. But something that I noticed as a PhD student is oftentimes the goals that I had to be working on were very big. So it's not just like sit down, write 500 words and move on to the next thing. For example, it is write a paper. And if you've never written a paper before, which I hadn't when I started my PhD, it's very hard to get a sense of how long some of these things will take. And then if you have the normal advice of divide your tasks into smaller goals such that you can tackle them, with little Pomodoro sessions. It is sometimes very demotivating when you don't meet these goals. And I found this journaling or this time tracking technique allowed me to still take care of my time and still kind of have to do's without it being as strict as having a super clear to do list. So I will go into a little bit more detail on how I do it. And definitely keep in mind that you might have a different preference for how you track your time, but this is just one idea of how I like to do it. So as I said, at the beginning of each day, I usually have two, three goals that I work on. And then as soon as I start a task, I usually track time. So I know down at the beginning of this task, what I'm working on and know down what exactly I'm doing with this time stamped technique. And then the other thing I usually write down is when I switch from one task to another task. So for example, maybe at 10, I was working still on a PhD presentation and then 11, I switch to a no new task. So I write down with a timestamp every time I decide to work on a new task. Then something I also like to do is if I switch tasks without completing it, I make sure that I make a note of the next step that needs to be done in this task. So for example, if I'm writing a paper and I finished figure one, I will write down finish figure two for next week. And this makes it such that if I kind of stopped halfway during a project, I can pick up this project quite easily the next day by just glancing into the journal and to see what the next to do's are in this project. I also usually track down if I have any doubts. So for example, if I'm really unsure about something in a project or if I'm stuck, I often write this down during meetings with my professors or colleagues, or even as I'm working on it myself. And this makes it such that I can always refer back to what got me stuck in a certain project and why I decided not to continue it at that moment. 
and then maybe once I pick it up I already am unstuck or I can think of a strategy to kind of get unstuck by getting help from other people for example. Then I also track small to do so I do this with a little open square and I track these to do's these small to do's such that at the end of the day if I have some time over I can kind of take off all these small to do's but it won't derail me during the working day itself. So if I'm working on writing a paper I won't get distracted by this little small voice in my head that says like you still have to buy a gift for your sister for example. I also note down distractions. This I think is quite important to also be quite honest with yourself but when I get distracted even if it is with productive things such as watching something or reading something I write down what distracted me and this can also be something that distracts you in your mind so if you're thinking about something else while well, you should be working on the paper I usually note that down. So for example that can be that I think I should send someone an email or that I should do something on a certain project or anything basically and I noticed by having these distractions written down in general I get less distracted and second I'm also more aware of when I am being distracted or why I am being distracted. Furthermore I also track uh, ideas if I have a new idea that pops up and I think that could be really beneficial for the PhD I don't immediately go into this black hole of trying to research this new idea because that's very easy to do. I usually write it down and then if I have a chance I can come back to this idea later when I have a little bit more time and finish my primary task. Lastly I also write down emotional notes or emotional blockages if I have them during the day. So quite often what I notice as a PhD student is that we have a tendency to procrastinate a lot or as students in general as well and sometimes I noticed this was primarily because I was hesitant to start a project if it was really big or really overwhelming and if I noted down this feeling I was having usually the valence of the emotion would reduce a little bit and also I could take some distance from looking at this emotion and kind of seeing it for what it was which was just a little bit of procrastination and oftentimes this allowed me to get over this little hurdle and actually start on a project. So in general the reason I like this method a lot is that as opposed to the Pomodoro method it kind of allows me to keep working on the task continuously even if I was a little distracted for a while or even if I have really big overwhelming to do's I can just start to work and already seeing this page fill up is really satisfying to see what exactly I worked on and it is also really nice for myself to kind of reflect later on what I've worked on. In general I do want to emphasize that this is not a very organized process so what I'm showing you here now in this book might seem very organized but of course in reality it is not this organized. I usually just take notes really quickly or do it during meetings or have it quickly in these smaller uh, pocket notebooks that I also carry. This is a really nice one from Moomin. Uh, if you know the character but yeah so I have different ways of doing it and it's not always as neat as I am presenting to you now so don't let perfectionism get into in the way of trying this kind of journaling techniques. So the second step then is to do an audit. So an audit is kind of where you go over everything you wrote at the end of the week for example or at the end of the month and kind of see what kind of patterns you recognize, what kind of habits you uncover and also see if you can maybe change a few of those or reflect basically on the metacognition that you have while doing science. So in general for me I do this about once a week, not always this strictly but I like to do it on Sunday morning when I have a little bit of fresh mind and uh, some time. So I grab my orange notebook and then I sit down and kind of look at the list of everything that I wrote. So I make note of the to-dos that are still open. So these little boxes, if there's still some open, I will or transfer them to my calendar of things I need to do in the future or will try to do them right then and there. If it's for example buying a gift, I will try to go online and buy a gift. For ideas that I've noted down, I sometimes transfer them to Notion if I really want to keep them in my memory and I want to keep track of them because sometimes I have a few that might need a little bit more exploration and then I like to have them more in this second brain type of setup which I've talked about before. Three, I also have this list of continuous projects or kind of could do projects. So these are projects that I could do in the future if I had a little bit more time and it's kind of this endless list of tasks but for example I was talking with a friend that we should write a paper together and currently I don't have time to write this paper 
but perhaps in two three months when work quiets down a little bit this is a project that i can pick up and then kind of put in my active to-do list right now so aside from this i also try to get a general overview of how the week went did i manage to complete some of my tasks why and why not what distracted me was there something particular that caused this was it the environment was it the people around me and this really allows me to get an overview of how i'm spending my time and what i'm spending my time on so that kind of brings me to this next topic of creation over consumption so in general i found that this method of journaling also helped me to become more aware of when where and how i create a primary question i often have for myself is how much did i create during the week and how much time did i spend creating over consuming i think in general this method allows you to become very aware of the moments that you create and the moments that you consumed so for example consumption in scientific work kind of looks like this like reading many articles going to many lectures buying more books and i think as a phd student or a student in general we can kind of fall into this trap that we feel we need to consume more and more and more information before we feel ready to add anything to the scientific discourse and if you're doing a phd for four years it can take four years and you can still not feel ready to create anything new or create any new science so having these two mindsets where one mindset is really this consumption mindset and the other one is really this creation mindset i think it's really important to have moments during the day that you're in this creation mindset so a few ways you can go more often to this creation mindset is first of all to kind of look at the ratio that you have of creation for it versus consumption so if you audit yourself and you see during the day you can even do this by color coding in how many hours do you spend creating and how many hours do you spend and consuming and it differs a little bit per job of what this ratio should look like so for example maybe if you're writing many literature reviews this ratio can be even 90 10 where you have to read 90 percent of the literature to only write one line about this literature but if you for example are doing more coding projects you actually don't have to read those a lot of coding books to get the concepts or the general concepts of coding and i actually think you get better at coding by doing it more yourself so there maybe the ratio actually switches and it depends a little bit on you yourself what you think a good ratio is or on your job but if you notice in general that you spend a lot of time consuming and you would like to create a little bit more or in your work or in general a few little tips that i use is for example once you've read a paper to write down a short note of what you have read or if you're learning code to try to immediately implement a code and you can kind of do this with anything you consume so if you consume a lot of lectures try to reiterate or try to re-explain what the lecturer has told you during his lecture in your own words or write down a short blog post about it and that way i actually think you also consolidate the information a lot better so let me know if that works for you another tip that really works for me really well is to consider why you consume so if you're consuming a lecture really have it clear for yourself why are you consuming this lecture so how is this going to help you in the next step of your scientific research question so if you're currently trying different optimization techniques for example it might make sense if you've never tried an optimization technique to watch a lecture about it but then immediately try to implement the information you've learned there and really think how different lectures or how different books connect to your own research then lastly i also try to start the day by creating instead of consuming so instead of consuming more in the morning i try to write 500 words in the morning for a research paper paper or i try to create one figure or i try to create one piece of code and i think this kind of sets you up for creating more instead of consuming more so another easy way to do this is to just free write in the morning so julia cameron wrote about this book on morning pages and i think that's also a really good way if you just want to have a little bit more free-flowing thoughts instead of this really structured i need to finish this figure by uh one o'clock which is maybe a bit too intense to start your morning with and i personally found this really effective for starting my day instead of reading a lot of papers which just can feel really overwhelming although i think it's also an important part of being a phd student but it can feel endless in general and something interesting that i then notice also from the phd is that if you really think about creation instead of consumption you can also integrate creation in all aspects of your life so in general this is the idea of creative 
leisure, which I also think is in some sense more restful than just passively consuming some things and in a lot of ways also more satisfying. So for me, that's like something like creating these videos or writing online. So I also like to write blog posts about some of the things I've learned during the PhD. Um, you can find the newsletter down below if you're interested. But in general, if you don't have a creative job or you're not a researcher, but you do want to create a little bit more, I think it's really nice to put some of your work out there. It's really interesting to see what kind of people you connect with. And what I also really find interesting is once you've created in your free time, that kind of also bleeds into your real working life where you also start to create more. So as you produce more, you actually she starts to produce even more. So it's kind of this rolling snowball of production. And maybe I've heard a lot that some people are a little bit shy to put their work online, which I definitely was at the beginning. But sometimes I try to remember this quote from Alain de Botton, who says that anyone who isn't embarrassed of what they learned or who they were last year, probably isn't learning enough. And I think this is really important to keep in mind that if you're learning a lot and you're embarrassed or if you're creating a lot of new work and you're embarrassed of your work a year later, it's actually a really good sign because it showed that you've grown as a person, as a creator, as a creative, and in general, probably also as a researcher. So following off from the topic of content consumption and actually testing your knowledge, if you're trying to teach yourself something new the way academics do, so not just by passively reading information, but actually also testing yourself along the way. Another recommendation is Brilliant, who were also kind enough to sponsor this video. So Brilliant gives you visual interactive lessons in subjects like mods, science, data, and programming. So instead of just watching lectures, you can actively solve problems and build real understanding through testing. One of the most helpful resources that I've tried is this resource on scientific thinking. It walks you through the core concepts using hands-on challenges that train you to think like a PhD student or a researcher. You don't just have to memorize everything, but you are actually learning better by asking these questions and apply what you know. If you're studying independently or trying to level up your thinking for research, problem solving, or just for curiosity, Brilliant helps you learn scientific concepts and step-by-step -step from fundamentals to more advanced ideas. So to start learning for free, go to brilliant.org or scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description. Brilliant is also kind enough to give you viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which unlocks unlimited access to everything they offer. So I hope you try Brilliant out and I also hope you try this journaling technique out. I'm really curious if you are going to try how it works for you and if you notice that you go a little bit more towards this creative side of yourself. So let me know down below and otherwise see you next week. Bye!